again everybody, welcome back to the channel. Day 8 of the front strip. Today we decided on a no bike day. We walk up to the ruins of the Mont St. Elwa Abbey. Have a nosy around the adjoining cemetery. Take an Uber and the Aris. But as per usual, things don't go according to plan. Turned into a bit of a disaster. But we'll tell you more about that later. For now, please join us and see what unfolds. Hi. What's up? Uh -huh. It looks like it's used a lot. <laughs> and this is what greeted us when we got to the top of the hill. The ruins of the Abbey of Mont St. Elwa. Originally founded in the 7th century, it remained the way it was until the mid 18th century when it was completely demolished and rebuilt. Only they'd be abandoned at the end of the 18th century during the French Revolution. During this period, it was ransacked by local villagers and any precious stone was removed, used some of it in the village, as still can be seen today. One interesting little story survives from the First World War period. During this time, Allied troops would use the towers, or the remaining part of the towers, as an observation post, since the Abbey was built on a relatively high point, and gave commanding views over the surrounding area. But when the soldiers went to the top of the towers, they disturbed the birds. The Germans caught on to this and realised that when the birds were taking flight, there was someone in the towers. So, they let loose with a few shells. The result of this was that they completely destroyed the fifth floor of each tower and removed about 10 metres in height on each side. And what we see now is what was left.
Duche. Oh. Get up the back wheel. What? You get up? No. Come you and Ray up if you want to. I'm not gonna up my back wheel. Now, if you recall, I said during the intro that today ended up being a disaster, and here's why. At that time, you couldn't visit a bar, or a restaurant, or even a museum without showing the French Pass Sanitaire, which is basically an app much like our own H NHS one, proving your vaccination status. Basically, no app, no entry. My phone battery started to run down a bit now. But I reckon that was fine because I brought my backup power bank with me. Wrong. I attached it to the phone when it had got down to 4%, only to see absolutely nothing happen. It hadn't charged at all the night before, which left us wondering what to do. In the end, we decided to call it quits as we weren't going to be allowed in anywhere. Take a taxi back to the cottage. So instead, I just round today off with a montage of some photos of Aris. I'm going to move straight on to day 9. It's a little hard rock, a hard rock grass. Okay, moving straight on to day 9, and we begin with the unpleasant task of having our rapid antigen test sorted out at the nearby pharmacy Terno in the village of Maria. Unpleasant, barely described it, but we all tested negative, making us good to go for our journey home. First up after this is the massive Maison Blanche German Cemetery, just 6 kilometres away near Neuville St. Vast. 45,000 German soldiers buried here. Followed this up with lunch at Avril Williams Tea Room in Mealy Mealy, hosted by the lady herself, and she included a tour of the trenches on the property. 
And finally, we stop at Newfoundland Park and Memorial at Bowman Hall. We walk the entire circuit around the battlefield. Like so many other battlefield sites in the area, it's hard to comprehend the fact that so many died here. And indeed, still rest here. One of the many stories associated with this place is that of Rifleman James Crozier, charged with desertion, sentenced to death by firing squad, 
the age of 21 on February 27th, 1916. He was held in a cellar in this complex. On the day of his execution, he was too drunk to walk. He was carried to the execution post, hung on a hook where they was tied in place. And a fire squad of 10 men selected from his own unit fired on the order and all deliberately missed. A subaltern was called forward to check, said that there was still life. Another officer was called forward to shot James through the heart with a pistol and declared him dead. The man who'd recruited James into the army, his namesake, Lieutenant Colonel Percy Frank Crozier, was key in the execution, but he was also key in having James enlisted into the army. At the time he promised his mother that he would ensure that no harm came to her son. So not only did he fail in that respect, but he also tried to cover up the true nature of James's death by trying to pass it off as a killed in action. And this man would continue up the ranks to become a Brigadier General. Hardly fair reward for his actions. The memorial was allegedly carved by a stretcher bearer later in 1916. The man on the photo is Geoffrey Malins. Malins was appointed official war photographer in 1915 and given the honorary rank of lieutenant. He's famous for filming the Hawthorne Ridge mine explosion and the troops advancing on the crater afterwards, 2nd Battalion Royal Fusiliers. Malins was also responsible for recording the 1st Battalion Lancashire Fusiliers as they lay in the sunken lane prior to the 1st of July assault on the Somme. His coverage of the assault on the Hawthorne Ridge crater is widely assumed to be the first ever recorded combat footage. Well, I wanted to return to this location because I wanted to see exactly where Malins had placed his camera and look at the ground as he looked at it back in 1916.
usual, not the top of a hole, but you can see 